Unaendelea kutazama Citizen Town Hall na nataka tu kuangalia baadhi ya jumbe ambazo zimetumwa hapa kabla ya kumpatia nafasi Kevin. Uh, Professor Beno Mwantho anasema Kenyans are not moved by the big fish arrest. We shall be moved by the billions recovered and the big fish convicted. We are a suffering generation. This is another episode of the unpopular movie Corruption is Alive. Kevin, anaswali kuhusiana na tukio la hivi majuzi ambapo kunaonekana kama kuna nia ya kupunguza visa vya ufisadi lakini hiyo nia imeweza kuonekana matunda yake. Okay, my name's are Kevin Anachoni. Uh, my question my question is about the lifestyle pro of the procurement officers. The, the investigation that was carried on about the procurement officers of the government. We didn't get the results, we didn't know what happened, and for us as the young entrepreneurs, we, we really need to know what happened and the results that came out. At least, Dr. Terry, you can help us on that. Thank you. Okay. And uh, before, before Dr. Terry comes in, Irungo, I, I want you to weigh in on that. Uh, I know that question is not directed to you because you are not the one in charge of that process of vetting procurement officers. But I guess his frustration is we have a government where on one hand we are seeing these arrests happening. But on the other hand, there were orders that were made in previous months or years that were never followed up on. Mm -hmm. And so you don't quite know what to believe. What are your thoughts on that and, and on some of the other things we've talked about here? So if I can take the conversation into a bit of a political um, direction. I mean, what we're seeing in the country at the moment is, you know, let me put it into layman's terms. It has all the signs of a marriage that has uh, no option of a divorce. <laughs> the relationship between the president and the deputy president has obviously broken down. They have irrecon irreconcilable differences. But unless one, is, uh, uh, unless one is declared either insane or uh, criminally um, culpable, there is no way that this relationship can be broken up. And I think this is the central question that Kenyans are asking. How long will the cabinet be essentially torn apart by this tension? And are we going to squander the next three years of this country's history as we watch this unfold? And I think the question you know, we all need to kind of grapple with is what will it take for us to move beyond a situation where the cabinet has not been able to meet for several weeks now? Um, will, it take another, uh, will it take another arrest of a high-profile cabinet min minister? Or actually, what are we beginning to look for, which is essentially a moment where the president says, I have to reshuffle my cabinet, I have to declare um, several principal secretaries redundant, and essentially that would be the way forward. But I think the one thing that is clear now is that there is no other option for the president um, within the next few days, but to simply declare that the officers that have been prosecuted uh, today in the announcement by the Office of the De Director of the Public, uh, pro public Prosecutions, mm -hmm. that they uh, have to step down or he is setting them aside. I think that's the next thing that we need to see from this cabinet. And, and is it the political intrigues that have affected directives like those ones, where an order is made a couple of months back and there's no follow-up because in a sense, every, it's, it's like chess where you move a piece, then you wait and see what would the reaction be. Could there be a linkage between the one corruption and how uh, political moves are being made? No, I, th I think the deputy, uh, you know, the director of public prosecution statement today was a very clear statement. He talked about a breach of trust. He talked about um, state officers essentially using their position criminally to defraud the, the Kenyan public. As long as the rule of law is applied uh, in that context, I think we have a chance of success. When it begins to be a chess game, I think that's when we'll begin to lose it. And that's why this process has to be kept out of the hands of politicians. Has to be kept out of the hands of politicians. Mashrima. Nadani kama neza kufafanua zaidi swali lake kuhusiana na haswa ili hatu ambayo ilichukuliwa wakati ambapo Raisu Rukenyata litangaza kuwa kutakuwa na uchunguzi wa maisha ya maafisa wa serikali kuhusiana na jinsi wanavyoishi, mishahara wanayopata. Zile hatu ambazo tumeona zimefuatiliwa ndiye zinaonekana kama zinafuatilia yale maagizo ya rais Uhuru Kenyatta ama ni agizo tu linalotolewa kisha linasahaulika. Waiga. All right. Daktari Mtalala. Endelea hapo. Asante asante Mashirima. Kakangu jawabu sina. Ambalo niko nalo ni shauku kama ambalo uko nalo wewe mwenyewe. 
Mimi nikikumbuka mtukufu rais akisema kwamba tathmini itaanzia kwake mwenyewe kisha ende kwake William Ruto. Tushaiona? Hii vetting ilikuwa kwamba itaanzia kwake rais mwenyewe alitangaza akiwa Mombasa kwamba nitakuwa mimi kwanza kisha naibu rais. Tangia wakati huo hatujaiona. Kwa maoni yangu alivyosema bwana Hilton shida tulionayo ilitupata mwaka 2013 wakati hao mabwana walikuja pamoja kama mapacha shati rangi moja tai rangi moja mikrofoni rangi moja <laughs> baadaye hii serikali haikuwa ya jubilee hii serikali ni ya William Ruto na wandani wake wa mkoa Rift Valley na marafiki wao Rais Kenyatta na wandani wake wa mkoa kati na marafiki zao. Huo ndio ukweli. Tusemezane ukweli. Na hakuna ambapo William Ruto atakwenda. Maana serikali ni yake. Na hata hii handshake iliyoletwa. Madhumuni yake ilikuwa ni kwamba iwapo William Ruto ataasi na kutoka basi mwana jaramogi awe ni mwenye kumsaidia. Lakini hawatoshi pale. Msikize Murkomen, msikize Oscar Sudi wanasemaje? kwamba wanifichua uchi na mimi nitakufichua uchi. Sasa Rais Kenyatta, you tayari kufichiliwa uchi? Hicho ndicho kizungumkuti. Mengine yote ni bure bilashi. Mwanzilima nadhani sina cha kusema, hebu endelea tafadhali. Hata <laughs> <laughs> mimi nimeona niendelee tu maana ungetatizika kidogo hapo. Uh, kuna mwanafunzi hapa ambaye ana swali kuhusiana na hiyo ndoa ambayo uh, Irungu ameitaja kuwa ni ndoa ambayo haina uwezo wa kuvunjika. I'm David, I'm David Wiper, a student leader from the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. My question is directed to the doctor, the only legal mind that we have in the bench this night. <laughs> is there any legal prescription that bestows the President of the Republic of Kenya powers to sack his deputy once implica implicated in a corruption scandal? And if not, how can we make that beautiful proposal of mine one of the referendum questions? Thank you. So, so first of all, the position of a president and the, and the deputy president, immunity, does it cover both seats? Uh, and, and that's a question that he... Technically, immunity vests in the president. Immunity from criminal prosecution vests in the president. That is the law. However, we must understand the architecture of the presidency. The constitution envisages a presidency that is two in one. However, where the deputy is found to have been culpable of a criminal offense, nothing stops. Criminal charges are being brought against him. But that's where it ends, my brother. Who will be the first to tie the proverbial bell Okay, I think you've answered the question that he wanted. Let's get, let's get another one. Na mwona irungu wapo, nataka kujibu kaba kumpatia mtu mwine na fast. Let me just also touch on that question. Article 150 is very clear. If you're looking for how to, I guess, how to manage the relationship between the president and the deputy president, Article 150 is the key cause. I just want to read it here. The deputy president can only be removed on the grounds of mental or physical incapacity, criminal negligence, or... Um, under national or international law or gross misconduct. Those are the grounds under which this can happen. So these, these are the only grounds that he can be removed. Now, for those of us who are following the discussion around Punguza Mzigo, um, um, there is an important element in that uh, uh, referendum <coughs> question that is being put to the nation. The first is that we abolish the positions of deputy governors, and I presume also the position of deputy president, because one of the problems we have had is in many cases, not just at the level of the deputy president, but the level of the deputy governors, we are finding that those two positions cannot be extricated from each other. So you have a situation like the county of Nairobi, where we have been unable to have a deputy governor because of the concerns that the governor has in terms of that process. So I think for me, the thing that we need to be looking at is if we are going to go for a referendum, what are the aspects of that referendum 
um, that are contained in the petition by uh, Ekuru, Akwat oh, and others mm -hmm. that we need to actually look at from a corruption point of view and from a political point of view. Okay, thank you. Let's try to get one or two more Tuki, questions in. Tukisalia katika hilo swali kuhusiana <coughs> na sheria zetu na jinsi ambavyo zimeandikwa. Tinega, ana maoni ambao huenda labda naeza kusaidia katika hili jang. Uh, kwa majina naetwa Tinega na nafikiri uh, swali langu au mwelekezi wangu ataweza kunisaidia ambaye ni wakili kwamba sheria Kenya zinatungwa sehemu mbili hii maraia au bungeni sasa kuna swali ambao kwamba sisi kama raia tunahitaji kufitisha kitu lakini hatujui mbinu ya kufikisha mswada wetu bungeni kwamba corruption imetusumbua sana na the only way kuweza kudeal na corruption is the kwamba tutengeneze mswada tupeleke bungeni maana wa bunge kuja kufanya hivyo hawatafanya kwa sababu itawafunga wao ni sisi tutengeneze tupeleke bungeni okay. hizo njia za kufanya hivyo unaweza kutueleza kama wakili mwisho kabisa ni kuhusiana na swala la kupambana na ufisadi itabidi turudi mashuleni to introduce lessons za corruption katika watoto make sisi ambao tushafikisha miaka 30 na kuendelea tushaoza na uweze kumfundisha samaki kumkunja samaki kama shaka uka asanteni asanteni thank you do we have any more questions let him take that let one, him one take that one okay briefly please no swala ningependa hata ndugu yangu kimeo anisaidie pale kisha mimi nitamalizia <laughs> Asanti. Um, nafikiri kuna nafasi kadha wa kadha ya za kuweza kuwasilisha matakwa yenu kwa bunge. Jia la kwanza likiwa ni katika sheria katiba yetu inatoa nafasi ya wananchi kuweza kushiriki katika ule mpangilio wa ku, wa kutengeneza ama kubuni sheria. Kwa hivyo unaweza kwenda kwa mbunge wako ukapitia kwake kuweza kuwasilisha maoni yako. Jambo la pili ni kwamba unaweza kwenda kwa kamati ya bunge wakati sheria fulani inayotengenezwa te, ina wakati wa ile nafasi wanaita public participation window ukaweza kupeana memorandum ambayo imeandikwa ama ukafika hata pale na kuweza kuzungumza kutoa maini, maoni yako kibinafsi jambo la tatu unaweza kupitia kwa ile tunaita petition ambayo kuna mpangilio ambao unaweza kutumia ku present a petition na kuna kuna, kuna, kuna njia tofauti ambazo unaweza kufanya hivyo. Kwa hivyo tunaweza kuzitumia hizo njia. Lakini ningependa ni rudi kwa swali ambalo liliulizwa pale uh, kuhusiana na procurement officers. Okay, and we want to take that as your final comment because I've just and, realized and, we are out of time so go ahead. And I think for me while the intention was good, the execution was very poor. We don't know who did the this this uh, lifestyle audits how mm -hmm. using what tools for what purpose and to what end corruption is about at the center of the fight against corruption is transparency okay if you cannot shed light on these basic things that is an exercise in futility finally the question that has been asked about the president and the deputy makes me think about another problem we've now talked about appointed officers who have been arrested and might be charged and the law says once they are charged they stand suspended at half pay until they are cleared. Mm -hmm. What about those who are elected? Governors, members of parliament, women representatives, senators. What happens? If they are charged and they continue to serve, it's an absurdity. I do not think that we can argue fundamentally that there is no law to stop them from discharging those, those responsibilities. But that's how our politicians argue. And therefore, none of the public officers, elected public officers who have been charged with an economic crime have vacated office. They continue to discharge their responsibilities, including members of parliament exercising oversight over resources while they are themselves are facing charges about, you know, uh, corruption. Something needs a gap that, that definitely needs to be looked at. Irungu, let's get your last thoughts. So I think my final thoughts on this one essentially is that um, I would hope in the next coming few, the next few days, we would see uh, these individuals uh, being told to step aside, that they do not continue to remain uh, in office, and definitely they do not continue to oversee public resources and the management of public finance. That would be the first thing. 
I think also the development uh, partners or the lenders, I think there is a question mark about how, how come um, this whistle was not blown much earlier by some of the uh, friends of Kenya, as we would call them. And then lastly, I think for all Kenyans, I think to pay attention to the uh, referendum question that's been put on the table, the so-called uh, Punguza Mzigo uh, option, because I think that is an important, uh, 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 I guess, an important initiative that everybody needs to look at carefully. And I'll be interested to see what happens with the MCAs and the county assemblies across the country. Okay, Wanjiro? Points, and one is to look at uh, the fact that Kenya was rebased, the economy was rebased to a middle income, allows us to borrow from the international markets. Now, what this means is that government is able to negotiate for the kind of, um, for larger kind of um, uh, facilities that don't have adequate scrutiny because there is a bit of a lacuna in the law. And like we've said here, the political will is not there because of the just um, tied with the, the interests of the, the politicians. So th that's why we are seeing bigger and larger schemes of corruption in line with this growing economy, even though those benefits are not trickling down to us. The second thing is ask yourselves, why did the former DCI, former DPP, not, um, you know, try, pro, you know, uh, prosecute yes. qu cases the way we are seeing now. The matter of appointments is very important. Right now, the Auditor General, Controller of Budget, who are key in the fight of corruption, actually in preventing corruption, are, are vacating office. And we've seen a very bad trend with the National Assembly where these appointments are being made on political basis, on a very spurious kind of uh, very casual basis, or based on political interest. So we need to ensure that we get the right people in that office and the buck stops with the president because we have a political party that's um, uh, you know, in government and is giving instruction, is supposed to direct the, the the parliament mm -hmm. in terms of how to make how to use the law how to enforce the law so th the proof of um, the president's actually the president has made many mistakes the president also has a big battle this political battle which is of his own making I think it's this whole uh, tanga tanga kieloeke was going to come unfortunately and it's unfortunate as Kenyans we are going to suffer because of that politics but the president still has an opportunity to redeem himself in the way he made these two good appointments he needs to ensure that we make more good appointments okay. to salvage the situation because right now we are in a crisis last last we're talking about referendum we don't have a level playing field for a referendum yet mm -hmm. this government has not been implementing the constitution they are purporting to then go and amend and there are some things that need to be put in place especially concerning devolution as a level playing ground before we accept to move into a referendum. Okay, that's an interesting point that you've raised as your last one. And of course, you said that pr the buck stops with the president. Dr. Mm. Muhana, you <coughs> have you. the last word here. Thank you. It saddens me when I recall that in the midst of all this, we have forgotten that through the Elections Amendment Act 2018, our elections, ladies and gentlemen, are manual largely this was amended in the heat of the election dispute and it has not been changed we are quiet we are silent and come 2022 again we'll be out there fighting i say no more than quote what the supreme uh, president of the of, of the court of kenya says maraga maraga just maraga when he says that the greatness of a nation rests on its fidelity to the constitution the rule of law and above all the fear of god do not despair hang on this is your country thank you i think that's a good last word uh, thank you so much samuel kimeo executive director transparency international irungu huchan executive director amnesty international uh, we've also had wanjiro gikonyo the national coordinator for the institute for social accountability and dr alutalala muhwana an advocate of the High Court who has uh, almost turned to be a bit of a poet as we wound up the program. Thank you for that. Uh, your, the last comment you had, I think, is actually uh, the Twitter bio for one of our guests on this show today as well. And of course, to our audience and uh, Mashrima, who I know has so many more questions. I don't know how she'll even wrap this up, Mashrima. 
Hata mimi mwenyewe nashindwa vile nitaanza. Manake maswali ambayo yamebaki ni mengi sana. Kulikuwa na maswali kuhusiana na jinsi vijana wanaweza kuhusishwa katika vita dhidi ya ufisadi. Kulikuwa na swali kuhusiana na kama mashirika kutoka mataifa ya nje kama vile ambavyo tumeona mashirika kama FBI yakihusishwa katika vita dhidi ya ufisadi kama kutakuwa na tofauti yote. Na kuna swali lingine ambalo limeulizwa. Nadhani hiki ni kile kipindi ambacho kinahitaji kuwa na sehemu ya pili. Mwingine alikuwa anauliza kuhusiana na chango wa makanisa ama uh, mashirika tu ya kidini uh, kuhusiana na jinsi wanavyopokea pesa ambazo wanasema hawawezi kumhukumu yoyote ambaye analeta sadaka kanisani nadhani hayo ndio maswala ambalo ambayo tukipata nafasi nyingine tutaweza kupata majibu lakini nadhani pia wakati wenyewe wana majibu kama vile tumesikia kutoka kwa wageni wetu na washirika wa kipindi hiki uh, ni sisi wenyewe tuweze kuamua ni nini ambacho tutafanya kuanzia wakati wa uchaguzi na hata wakati utendakazi wa maafisa wa serikali unaendelea naitwa Mashirima Kapombe usiku mwema